first off, just uh, wanted to get your reaction. Uh, I guess, how did you find out the news this morning? Uh, I found out, I got a call from Jim Sterk um, late Thursday night when they were notified. Um, and then we talked about the timing of the, of the statement with a holiday weekend. Um, so it was really hard for me to keep that news to myself. Um, told my staff, but I didn't want anything to, to go like wildfires on social media before it was actually a press statement by Mizzou. Um, so it was a pretty exciting weekend for us. Can you give me a, a, your, your first reaction? What did you do? Was it a fist pump or a you know, dance or something? <laughs> I, I think I did have a little fist pump. And, and it was like a sigh of relief where it was like, oh, thank you. Like, just to be able to hear the news, um, you know, it's that weight that's been lifted off your shoulder. And, you know, every conversation, every recruiting conversation, um, our incoming freshmen, they're always wanting to know or seniors want to know. And it's finally that, that breath of fresh air of, you know, we finally got the news and we can move on and we can start looking forward and we don't have to talk about this anymore. I, I saw your, your, your tweet, your, your, your message to the team. I guess how good does that feel to, to move forward from this and, and focus on what you were hired to do, which is, you know, win, win these softball games and get back to the uh, College World Series? Yeah, I mean – that's why I took the job because um, I know the potential. I mean, it, it proven track record. They've done it before. Um, and that's why the players are here to have that opportunity. I mean, 13 teams in the SEC have gone to the postseason three years in a row. And this would have been the first year in 2020 that, you know, one team had to be left out of control. But, you know, that's, that's why they're here. Um, you have every opportunity to, to be able to take advantage of the resources, the conference that we play in. Um, you know, it's now we can actually focus on it and actually talk about what our posts entail rather than it just being an if and well, maybe next year. Now we know it's a possibility. Did the NCAA, uh, I know, I guess you kind of got the message relayed from Jim, but did they give any explanation on, uh, on, on why? It seems like sometimes the NCAA, it doesn't have a great explanation. So I would just be curious if they gave any sort of explanation on why the, why they chose to do what they did. Um, I know I know the delay had just had a lot to do with they got a lot on their plate right now with COVID nineteen um, and making a lot of those decisions. But each committee is completely separate. So you have the infractions committee um, that really it comes down to, and I know they have a lot of other investigations that they have going on right now at different universities. Um, but I think it was just the delay of everything. Um, you know, I know the NCAA, when they made a statement saying that the spring stats will stand, then it was, it was looking pretty good. If they're recognizing that the spring season existed where everything was in place and the records and the stats um, will still be in place and they're, they're going to acknowledge them, then they're recognizing that the season took place for all the spring sports. So I felt like we were in a real good situation, but then again, it's way above my pay grade and I'm not on that committee, but I'm just real glad that they – they came with a ruling when they did. The timing is, is great. I mean, obviously, I would have loved to find out a couple months ago, but, um, you know, it's appropriate right now. So then we can almost put a semicolon um, in our summer and really start to look forward to the future where it's not lingering around as the school, school year starts. How has, how has this changed your recruiting? I guess just since Thursday, is it, is it, is it that big a deal for you, you think, to, to have that? Absolutely, because you have, we have nine freshmen coming in, um, and everyone wants to play for a championship. Like, that's, that's their ultimate goal and their dream. I mean, every softball player dreams of going to the College World Series. And, you know, last year we had to deal with the fact that and, and our returners had to look at, do they want a red shirt and sit this year out? Um, no one chose to, to transfer. No one chose to leave the program. Everybody played. Um, but if we had to go through that again, those, those are real difficult conversations. Um, and people could have left the program because, again, they, they only have four years to play. And when you have those dreams taken away, um, then you got to find a, a different purpose for why you're playing. And same with our incoming freshmen. Like, they want to have an opportunity to, to potentially go to the NCAAs and, and the College World Series. And if you're told before you even step foot on the field that, sorry, your dreams have to be put on hold, um, you know, other schools have those opportunities. And the way recruiting is now – and the transfer process that you know other schools would immediately grab a hold of some of our players 
and, and entice them with that opportunity. But now we, we don't have to cross that bridge because we have, we have every opportunity to be able to compete and go to the NCAA tournament. Do you think you can take some positives? Clearly your team had an edge this past season when you guys were still playing with that postseason ban. Do you think that'll carry over and into this next season and, and hopefully, you know, propel Mizzou back to, to where it once was? You know, I think this, this season taught our players more than anything ever could have. Um, every coach always tells their team, play every game as though it's your last. And you don't truly get it until you experience it. And, you know, athletes will go out there and they'll say they give it their all, but it's really not um, until their back's up against the wall and you get to that championship moment when you know you either win or you're going home. Um, that was our whole mentality all year because we knew we didn't have a championship. So we, we really fought to play every single game as though it was a championship. So when this, the news came down that the season was canceled, we had no regrets. We played every game and we gave every, every single opponent the best we possibly could. We had no regrets at all. So it wasn't the same devastation that a lot of teams across the country felt because they probably had regrets. They probably didn't work as hard as they possibly could up to that point in time. We left everything on the table and we have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. So it's that learning experience that I think, and I'm hoping it will transfer for the rest of their careers through here because they know at any moment it can be taken away from them because it was. Lastly, just uh, how, how are you going to remember the, uh, just the whole NCAA ordeal, uh, you know, being someone who had nothing to do with it, none of your players had anything to do with it. Um, and now, it, you know, it turns out that I guess, you know, it's just I mean, who would have thought, you know, a couple months ago that, it ended, wouldn't have really ended up affecting you too much, although I know it still did. Uh, just how, how, you, how you remember this whole ordeal? You know, I, because of the ordeal, I, I know that this is why I was hired. Um, the administration didn't know about it when, when they hired me, but when the sanctions came down and I had to tell my team the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, as soon as I got off that call, I said to my staff, who was all in the room with me, I know why I was meant to take this job because with my personality, um, I feel like I have a, a pretty level head at times. Um, but my perspective in realizing that there is a bigger picture and I can just see that if it was the wrong person in this leadership role, the program could have gone in a completely different direction. And I'm so proud in how the players responded to the leadership that we have within the program and within the administration that we're able to get through it without a lot of damage. Like you look at the program and the adversity that they've faced over the last three and four years, it can go and what happens with uh, other programs, it can go two different directions. You can either rise to the top and, and get stronger because of it, or you can go down to the bottom and then it takes a long time to get out of it. And we rose to the top. We responded. We learned a lot from it. I think the players have learned more lifetime lessons and life skills that they're going to carry with them the rest of their life. Um, not many athletes face the amount of adversity that we did. And it, it's any pressure that they face in a game isn't going to be a big deal. You know, bases loaded, three, two count, winning run on third day, not a big deal. Already faced more adversity in their entire life than, you know, any other athlete. So I think that they're just going to get stronger because of it. And, you know, 10, 15 years from now that they're going to look back and, you know, say, I'm able to accomplish this because of what I came through at Mizzou.